Around the planet, there are more than 1,300 active volcanoes, of which approximately 50 are erupting. These volcanoes are arranged into a variety of shapes and sizes, and each produce distinctive lavas. However, among these numerous volcanoes is a single unique example which is the world's most valuable. In the last 10,000 years, it has deposited approximately $10 billion worth of rare earth elements through its unusual solid black lava, which cools as a white color. The volcano I'm referring to is Old Yenyo Lingai, which is located in northern Tanzania. Looking back further in Earth's geologic history, similar rare earth element enriched lavas can also be found at locations such as Mountain Pass in California and Homa Mountain in Kenya. These deposits, although rare, represent some of the world's most valuable ancient volcanic eruptions and magmatic intrusions. So, how do they form? Should Old Yenyo Lingai be mined? This video will answer these two questions and discuss a highly unusual type of volcanic rock. All of these deposits, including the active Old Yenyolengai volcano, contain a highly unusual rock type known as carbonatite. Carbonatite is a very unusual type of volcanic rock, defined by more than half its weight being carbonate minerals, which are typically a white color. This is unusual as around the planet, the main component of lava at every other volcano is silica, aka silicon dioxide. While the typical stratovolcano contains 60% by weight silica, carbonatite lavas contain less than 3% silica. This unusually low silica content causes erupted lava at Old Yenyolengai to have a viscosity lower than water, causing it to move at unusually high speeds. You might look at Old Yenyolengai and ask, but wait, how can a volcano with steep slopes be formed from lavas which move very quickly, like would be expected on a shield volcano? The answer is that at Old Yenyolengai, the appearance of carbonatite lava occurred very recently and began erupting only in the last 15,000 years. There are several classes of carbonatite volcanic rocks, but the most common such as what is present at Old Yenyolengai seems to originate from highly alkaline magmas, generally with a composition known as phonolite. Over time, pockets of phonolite composition magma in the crust get so enriched in alkali elements and carbon dioxide that a threshold is reached. This causes two different composition liquids to separate from one another in a manner similar to adding vinegar to oil. This unique magma then eventually travels up to the surface and erupts or intrudes into the crust, depositing large quantities of rare earth elements. Although carbonatite lavas can be found around the planet, they tend to occur in large continental rift zones where the crust is slowly spreading apart, such as near Lake Baikal in Russia, or the East African Rift Zone in Tanzania and Kenya. While Old Yenyolengai is the most recent example of such, an older volcano in the region called Homa Mountain in Kenya produced carbonatite lavas around 5 million years ago. Theoretically, dozens of other rare earth element enriched deposits should be located in the region just waiting to be discovered. For clarification, so-called rare earth elements are not necessarily rare as each element in the group is more common in the crust than silver, but less common than copper. The issue lies that rare earth elements are very uniformly distributed in the crust. Very few areas exist in the world where rare earth elements exist in high enough concentrations to mine them for a profit. This is what makes them rare. Does this mean we should mine Old Yenyo Lengai as it contains more than 10 billion US dollars in rare earth elements? The short answer is no, as the value I just provided is misleading. It is similar to saying, I can make $100 via baking brownies, but you aren't accounting for the cost of ingredients, equipment, the oven, or your time. Thus, if all of the environmental and philosophical objections were to be ignored, mining old Yenyolengai would only be negligibly profitable at best. A better example of a profitable carbonatite lava sequence can be found in California at the Mountain Pass Mine. There, several million tons of 1.3 billion year old carbonatite lavas contain an average grade of 8.5% rare earth elements. This mine has been intermittently in operation since 1952 and will continue to be in operation for many years to come. As the demand for rare earth elements and green energy technologies, defense, and electronics continues to grow, so will the need for new discoveries. I recommend that more attention be brought to the following regions of the world which likely have undiscovered rare earth element deposits. The Northern Cordillan Volcanic Province stretching from British Columbia to far eastern Alaska, the Rio Grande Rift in New Mexico, and the ancient mid-continental rift zone adjacent to parts of Michigan and Minnesota. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron Cameron who requested this video's topic.